All right, there, this is Math 7, Unit 6, Lesson 3. This is Part 2 about reasoning about context with tape diagrams. So first we began with number uh, activity 1, find equivalent expressions. It says select all expressions that are equivalent to 7 times 2 minus 3, the difference of 2 minus 3n. And explain how you know each expression is equivalent. So we're looking at this e beginning expression and seeing which one of these are equivalent to that there. All right, so we can look at what they're doing here a little bit. It looks like um, in this first one here, we have nine minus 10 N, which is really there to see if you're thinking that these all add together, but they don't. And that's because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the distributive property here to do the seven times two and two, sorry, minus three N. And so if we were to use the distributive property, we would do seven times two, which is 14 and then seven times a minus three n, which is a negative 21 n. So if by using the distributed property, I end up with something that looks more like choice uh, number three right there, don't I? That's gonna work well. Here, this does not seem to work very well, nor does 14 minus three n work at all either. In this case, what I have is I have two minus three n, which is the same as the starting point, but we've moved the seven around the other side. So what we've done is we just moved the seven from one side to the other. That's not a problem there. That is just using the commutative property of multiplication, which allows you to move the order of things around. That's all that's happening there. So that one is gonna be okay uh, in the same way. Here, I see seven times two, and then it's multiplying that all by a negative three in. That's not quite what we're doing. We are multiplying, but we're multiplying the seven by each part of that expression individually to end up with two terms. So that also would not work. Let's take a look then at today's activity, um, which really is looking more at, at the tape diagrams. And here we have a picture of three, of uh, five different tape diagrams. And what we're wanting to do is to match some equations on the next page with each of these, um, each of these uh, tape diagram expressions. So real quick, the first equation on the next page is 2x plus 5 equals 19. They're already printed on your paper. I'm just writing them down here. So which one of these looks like 2x's plus a 5 to get to 19? When I look up here, I notice I have an x and an x. That's a 2x and a 5. And the sum of all those together seems to be a 19. So that one seems to go with choice A. But I can take a look over here and notice that I have an x and an x, that's a 2x, and a 5, also is 19. So those are essentially the same tape diagram, just a little different order. So I could put that also with b. Here I have a 2, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5x's. So that's going to be a little different there. Over here I have two groups of x plus 5. Or if I multiply that out, that becomes 2x plus 10, but we're not necessarily going to be that, do that. And over here, I have the same x plus 2 happening 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times there. So let's keep on looking here. This is 2x plus 5, and this is uh, 2x plus 5 as well. All right, so the second uh, equation is 2 plus 5x equals 19. So that's going to look like this one here, choice C, 2 plus 5x. So we would say C for that one. Then we have 2 times the quantity x plus 5 equals 19 and that's going to match d when i have two groups of x plus 5. then we have 5 times the quantity x plus 2. so where do i have x plus 2 five times that's going to be here in choice e x plus 2 five different times for choice e and then the next equation we have is 19 equals 5 plus 2x again that looks like 19 equals 5 plus 2x a or b and then we have the quantity x plus 5 times 2 equals 19. And here we have an x plus 5, 2 times, equals 19. So that'd be choice D. We have 19 equals the quantity x plus 2 times 5. So that's our x plus 2 times 5. So that'd be choice E. And then we have 19 divided by 2 equals x plus 5. So now we're getting a little bit more, a little bit more complicated than the other ones because now we're we're combining something with a 19 for the first time. So which one of these equations would allow you just to take a 19, a, divide a two out without messing things up? Well, that would be this one here because here we have 19 equal to two times x plus five. 
So if I divide both sides by 2, I end up with 19 divided by 2 equals x plus 5, which is the way that one is written there. And then finally, we have last one, 19 minus 2 equals 5x. Again, the same idea, where can I subtract a 2? If I put this back over here, I would have 19 equals 5x plus 2. So where do I see that at? Well, that's over here in choice C, and so that's what I would put for that one on that one. Now the next activity I want you to do is to just take these equations here and to sort them into a category of your own choosing. You decide how you want to sort them, um, and that's up to you, maybe by parentheses, maybe by multiplication, maybe by how you would um, eliminate the, or get the x by itself. I'll let you figure that part on your own. I'm going to move down to number three. Here we have two equations. Both of them are equal to 114 but they definitely are showing something different. It says draw a tape diagram to match each equation. So let's look at the first one. Here we have 114 equals 3x plus 18. So we know that we're gonna have a tape diagram like this and that the sum of the whole thing together is gonna to be equal to 114. And that's that number there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to separate it, though, into, first of all, into two chunks. So I'm going to break it up like this, and I know that my whole number just becomes one of my spaces there. Now, this 3x part, though, that means I'm going to do th x three times. So I'm going to take what I have left over and break that into three parts and label each one as x. So now I have three x's here, and I have 18 there. So a 3x plus an 18 is going to equal my 114. For the other tape diagram, a little different, 114 equals 3 times the quantity y plus 18. So I'm going to break this apart like so. Okay, I know that in sum I'm going to have 114, but I'm going to have this y plus 18, that group, three times. So I can break this into three different chunks and I have y plus 18, y plus 18, y plus 18. So I'm using that quantity, y plus 18, and I'm doing using it three times, one, two, three, to get to 114. Now it says using the method for, to find and solve. So let's look at the first one. We have 3x plus 18 equals 114. I would subtract by 18. That gets me 96 here equals 3x. I divide both sides, both sides by 3, so that x equals 32. On this side, I would do 3 times y plus 18 equals 114. And I think the first thing I would do would be to divide both sides by 3, so that y plus 18 equals 38. Because 114 divided by 3 is 38. Then I would subtract 18 and y is going to be equal to 20. So that's how I would solve that one there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to skip the are you ready for more Starflake. If you did that in class, that's excellent. I'm going to skip over that because we're not doing it in my class today. And let's look at our summary. The summary of today's lesson really is this, is that we've seen how to tape diagrams represent relationships between quantities because of the meaning and properties of addition and multiplication more than one equation can often be used to represent a single tape diagram. So there's different equations that can be used for one tape diagram. We could take this type tape diagram here, for example, and say that it's 26 plus 4x equals 46, and that makes sense. But we could also say it's 4x plus 26. We can reverse the order of those two. We can also put the 46 first, right, and turn that around. It's the same idea, and we can move things around here to say, well, let's solve for 4x. So there's different ways to write the equation, but you're still going to end up with the same solution. All right, let's take a look at tonight's homework. All right, so for tonight's homework, first of all, let me see real quick. Focus. So solve each question, equation mentally. So I have 2x equals 10. So mentally I know I'm going to have to divide this by 2. So 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. Over here, I know that we have 21 and negative 3. I'm going to need to divide both sides by negative 3. So I end up with a negative 7. 
over here, I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal, which is three over one to both sides. That goes away, six times three is 18. And over here, I'm also multiplied by the reciprocal, which is a negative two, negative two. So seven, negative seven times negative two is equal to 14, and we're set there. For number two, I have some magic squares. I'm just gonna do one of these here. The idea is that the sum, when we add up things together for the row, the column, and diagonal are all the same. Notice that every one of these, they give you at least one row or diagonal or column to start with. That's very helpful. So in this case, I know that the sum of those numbers is equal to nine. So everything I do has to be equal to nine. Over here, I have five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So everything in here has to be equal to nine. And this one is four plus two is six. So let's just do this first one real quick. I have seven plus three, I'm already at 10. I need to get to nine. So to do that, I'm gonna take one away. Let's look at this diagonal. Two plus three is five. How many more do I need? I need four in order to get to nine. Here, I can look at this diagonal if I want to or go across. Zero plus three is three. I need six more to get to nine. Double check this one. Six and four is 10. Minus one is nine. Look at the verticals, zero plus five give me, and four give me nine. And here I have two and six makes eight. I need one more. Double check this last one, five, eight, nine, and we're good to go. All right, number three, let's draw a tape diagram to go with that equation. For this equation, we're gonna draw a nice little tape diagram like so. I know that I have in total, I have 20 in total, whatever it is. And it looks like I have the quantity x plus one, and I'm doing that five times. So I'm gonna break this up into one, two, three, four, five, five equal parts, and each part gets an x plus one, x plus one, x plus one, x plus one, x plus one. So x plus one is happening one, two, three, four, five times, and that's how I'd make that tape, tape diagram. Looking at this next one here, it's also 20, but it's a little different, isn't it? Right, so we're gonna break this apart like that, and we're gonna say that our total quantity is gonna be equal to 20. Oops, sorry about that, bring it back down. But this time, I'm gonna have a one, and I have five x's. So I can make this part equal to one, and then whatever I have left, I'm gonna make that into five equal parts, and they each get an x. So one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna make five equal sections that each have an x. So that becomes my five x, that becomes my plus one, and it all equals 20 like so. For number four, I select all the equations that match the tape diagram. So we know we have 35 in total. We know it's equal to an eight, and it's an eight plus one, two, three, four, five, six, six x's all together. So let's see what we have over here. Here is 35 equals eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wait, wait, I'm, oh, I did a plus sign, sorry. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's my six X's, that's the same idea, that will work. Here I have 35 plus eight, 35 equals eight plus six X, just like we have there, that works great. Here you have six plus eight X, that's moving the X's around, and so that's not gonna work, so that's not gonna be a solution. Here, same idea, we have six X plus eight equals 35. That's fine, that's just changing the order of things, but you're still having a six X and an eight and a 35, no problem. For E, we're adding an X to the eight, and that's not gonna happen there, we can't do that. So that's a no. And here it's 35 minus eight. That one looks a little different, but our numbers look almost the same, right? Here's a 35 and a six X, 35 and a six X. So how do you get a minus eight? Well, you get a minus eight by subtracting eight from both sides. So you'd have 35 minus eight equals six X. So that matches choice F. So A, B, D, and F. And for our last one here, we're gonna be looking at cars with constant speed. I'm gonna find the number of miles each car drives in one hour at the given rate. So the first car goes 135 miles in three hours. So we take three hour, 135 miles, and then we divide that by three hours. Three goes into 135, it's gonna go into that one four times. That gets you 12, remainder 15, so 45 for number A. For this one, we have 22 miles in a half an hour. All right, so what are we doing? We're saying that's gonna be in a half an hour. We're dividing half an hour, sorry. We're doing 22 
divided by a half of an hour. All right, so 22 divided by half an hour is going to be, uh, that means we're going to be dividing 22 divided by 2, like so. And so we end up with, oops, sorry, we end up with Let's break this up here. Getting ahead of myself a little bit. So if there's 22 miles in half an hour, I know that I'm going to be doubling that because a half an hour is half of it. I want to go one hour. So I just take the 22 and do 22 times two to give me 44. And that's how I did that one there. In the 7.5 miles in a quarter of an hour, that means it's going to do that four times. I'm going to do 7.5. I'm going to do it not for one fourth of an hour, but I'm going to do it for a full hour. So four times that. 7.5 times 4 is equal to 30. So put a 30 right there. In this next one, I have 100 thirds of a miles in 2 thirds of an hour. So if I do 100 thirds and 2 thirds of an hour, that's like 100 over like a proportion. I have that rate over 2 thirds of an hour. And I want to find out how many miles per hour that is in 1 hour. So that's what my equation would kind of look like if I set it up. So if you were to rewrite that, you'd end up with 100 over 3 equals 2 thirds x. So to get the x by itself, we multiply by the reciprocal, by the reciprocal, and the 3's cancel out, and you have 100 divided by 2, which equals 50. And finally for e, we have 97 and a half in 3 and a half hours. So what we know so far is that 97.5 miles per hour happen in 1.5 hours and we're trying to find out how many miles per hour that is so that's our proportion there and so again we end up with 97.5 equals 1.5 and i don't have to do all this part but just showing you what i have divide both by 1.5 to get for x so i'm back to where i was so to solve that out there we have 97.5 and we're dividing 1.5 into that move the decimal over move the decimal over 15 goes into 97 six times, goes in there 90, and we subtract and have 7, and 15 goes into 75 five times, so we end up with 65 for that one there. And that's what we have. That's it for today. We'll see you next time.